the DDI Avata. How excited I was to get this and how disappointed I was after the first flight I'd made with this. I'm not going to get into all the specifics of this drone because I know you have watched uh, probably hundreds of them already going through the flight modes, how you fly it using the <coughs> different modes, uh, normal controller and uh, using the motion controller. I think you know all this. The thing I'm going to explain now is why I think this drone is actually so bad. And this is actually related to one thing. And I'm going to show you by just running this video. As you can see, I start outside my home uh, <clears throat> just to go on the, uh, out on the road. Uh, you can see it also a lot of dense uh, <clears throat> vegetation around it. And uh, as we look at uh, the megabits per second and uh, the HD meter, you can see that reaching 60, 70, 80, and 90 meters. It's, it's down on red. And I have to return. I mean, 90 meters in reach. And why do we have this? Well, Simply enough, it's because I live in a non-FCC region. We are using the CE system. And the range is just so bad on this. It's piss poor to say the least. And um, I mean, you get this drone mostly because you are going to fly around buildings, you're going to do dives around buildings, uh, probably also inside buildings. And um, I mean, with this range in the CE region, it's just unusable. And uh, I think th this is the bad thing about this drone. Uh, everything else I like, uh, battery life and so on, I mean, that's just great. But um, <clears throat> this, is, this is too bad. Uh, people who buy this in the CE region and trying to fly with um, anything other than a clear sight, is going to be very disappointed. And I mean, for me, even with clear sight, I could get, get probably 800 meters, then I got the same. And then uh, after that, the signal is lost, return to home kicks in, and uh, that's it. I mean, 800 meters in clear sight, that's just too bad. So um, how can we solve this uh, living in the CE? Well, there are a couple of hacks for this uh, called the, the FCC hacks. And um, I actually tried a couple of them. Uh, they all have different ways on how we do this. I'm going to explain this later on. But uh, if we take a look at this, uh, running the FCC hack, this is actually exactly the same flight. Uh, done uh, <coughs> at the same, probably the same exact uh, conditions. And as you can see, uh, the megabyte per second is uh, st still steady. You have a full uh, HD on the meter. And uh, we pass 90 meters now. Uh, still pretty strong at least. And we get to 120 meters. Still haven't dropped that much. And uh, Going further than that, 150 meters, uh, then we see a bit of loss, uh, we get the orange HD warning, and uh, going further than that, close to 200 meters, we get the same issue. But then again, this is in very dense conditions, it's very hot, much trees around, we have buildings around, and uh, I mean, at least the FCC hack made the distance twice as much. And uh, I know that penetration through these dense forests uh, is uh, a very hard thing, thing to do. But uh, still, when I run this hack, I couldn't get over one kilometer in range. No way I could do that. And uh, this made me think about my location, because out here we have a lot of uh, mobile communication towers. They are very close and it could mean that it's, it's a lot of radio interference. 
And uh, since we have no way to change the mode on uh, <coughs> the Avata, we can change it between uh, 2.4 or 5.8. We don't have the graph either to see it like we do on Mavics on, uh, on <coughs> or on my Mini 3 Pro. Uh, it's very hard to tell exactly what the FCC hack does. Uh, unless you have an RF meter, which I don't have, I can't see what signal strength I'm getting out of this drone or these goggles. But uh, this actually started uh, <coughs> made me start think, and um, yes, uh, on certain occasions I actually do that. So I um, packed my drone, uh, jumped into the car and drove away to another location that is very open, very open fields, uh, no radio towers close by. And uh, we did another test, and uh, this is the result I got from that one. So, uh, after passing <coughs> one kilometer, uh, we still have, I would say, almost full signal strength. And uh, keep on going, it doesn't drop like it uh, usually does. And remember that this is in clear sight, absolutely clear sight. 66 meters off ground, and I... Uh, uh, with binoculars, I, I could probably have seen the drone. But we still pass 1.2 kilometers and uh, still have good signal strength. And uh, when I reached uh, slightly over 1,300 1, meters, uh, I just turned around because I didn't see any point to keep on going. I mean, uh, I could probably have gotten uh, <coughs> over two kilometers with this. But uh, still, uh, the only thing I would, <coughs> probably the only thing I could have gotten out of that is that I could have go on until it's time to return because of the battery life. And uh, to me, that's not the way I use the drone. I'm not flying the drone just in one straight line, going as far as I can, and then wait for the battery to drain out and then have to return. I mean, what's the point of using a drone for that? It's no fun at all, and you can't get anything cinematic out of that. But uh, the issue is still that uh, if we look at this video, where I start from the same point, and I go around <coughs> behind the corner here, you see a lot of <coughs> trees uh, on the right, and uh, keep going close to the ground, just to have a radio shadow between me and the drone, and uh, going about 130, 140, 150 meters, you see the signal strength drop. And uh, this was also a low battery situation, so uh, it uh, started, it kicked in the return to home. But still, look at the MPS, well, megabits per second, it's nothing, absolutely nothing left. And it was 150 meters. And uh, looking at the home point, you can see where I am, so it's a lot of trees behind me, between me and the drone. And of course, the penetration issue kicks in. So I think that's the issue with this drone. Um, clear sight, you can probably reach uh, a couple of kilometers uh, using the FCC hack. But uh, then what's the point? You don't have enough battery, battery life to do anything fun with it. Uh, so uh, it's just a useless functionality in this case. Normally when you fly this drone, you want to go behind things. Uh, you need the penetration and that's the bad thing with this. I have been trying two different FCC hacks. Uh, one is uh, released from drone hack and uh, they actually make uh, like an app called the FCC app. Uh, it's a bit cumbersome to install. You need to get uh, an ID out of the phone, then you need to get that ID uh, registered with Apple. And uh, then you have to wait and do an install for this app. And then you have to connect the app uh, with each battery you change. You have to connect the app again to get it uh, to last. Uh, another way to do it is uh, using a text file. The text file is actually called uh, um, HAM underscore CFG underscore support. It's a zero about, uh, kilobyte file and you just drop it on a memory card and uh, in the root of the memory card and you put that memory card on in the goggles. And then you should, when you, when you look at the transmission settings, you should see that you have three channels when you switch to manual mode. And I can't see 
any difference between those two hacks. They act exactly the same. I get exactly the same performance. And uh, I mean, I can drop both links in the description. You can try them out. But uh, as it is right now, now I don't see any reason to pay $24 for the drone hacks version of this. Uh, and of course, uh, DJI's next update might um, stop the, the text file from working. But on the other hand, they could also stop that drone hack application somehow. So uh, I don't trust anything to last forever. So um, that's the bad thing about this drone. Everything else I like, I mean, the format, how it handles, how easy it is to fly with the motion controller, it's just great. Uh, but due to the regulations in the CE areas, the reach, the range, or the video feed is just too bad. So that's my two cents. Uh, please drop a note in the comments if you have any other uh, experiences from this. Uh, this is uh, my experience from flying it in Sweden. Uh, not sure if it's the same everywhere. But uh, the thing I notice also is that if you have a lot of radio interference, it will shut down the range a lot. Uh, flying from my house, uh, no way over 800 meters, even with the FCC hack. And uh, flying outside of my property, uh, open fields, probably two kilometers. So it's a huge difference uh, if you live in an area with a lot of interference. So that's my two cents on this. Fly safe and have fun. Take care.